Coming up on a one hour edition of City Spotlight, we focus in on Charleston and Mattoon with the Mayor of Charleston, Brandon Combs, Charleston City Manager, Scott Smith, Mattoon Mayor, Tim Gover, and Mattoon City Administrator, Kyle Gill. We will discuss current issues and happenings going on in their respective communities, how Charleston and Mattoon work together on various projects, and plus we talk about the impact of higher education in Coles County. Stay tuned, it's Charleston and Mattoon in focus, next on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. And good evening and welcome to City Spotlight. Tonight it's all about Charleston and Mattoon in focus. And I am pleased to be joined in the studio by Scott Smith, City, Charleston City Manager. Good evening. Brandon Combs, Charleston Mayor. Hello. Welcome. And uh, on the far corner here to my left, we have Kyle Gill, Mattoon City Administrator, Hello. and Tim Gover, the Mayor of Mattoon. Gentlemen, thank you for all being on. Delighted Thanks to be here. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. And uh, let's get started like uh, any other city spotlight that we do, talking about recent things that have been going on. And uh, both towns here in the end of April had their second uh, city council meeting. So let's both start, start with uh, Charleston first. And Brandon and Scott, the 2016-17 uh, budget was uh, on the agenda and uh, what transpired at uh, last Tuesday's uh, city council meeting? We put our budget on file back in March and we, we typically like to have our budget on file for uh, four weeks, approximately four weeks or at least a two council meeting layover period. And so uh, at our last council meeting, we approved our fiscal year 15, or 16, 17 budget. And uh, were there, you know, with uh, the state of Illinois budget situation and uh, a, a new year, what, what challenges did you have uh, with putting that budget together? Well, we're always concerned about uh, modifications or changes in the revenue streams from shared revenues from Springfield. So uh, the mayor and I, along with uh, several of our key staff, have been monitoring uh, the legislative uh, activities in Springfield just to make sure that if there are going to be any changes uh, relative to the shared revenue stream that the cities, both Mattoon and Charleston, all municipalities benefit from, uh, if that's going to get modified in any way, shape, or form, and what implications that may have on our budget. And the last time uh, both of you two were on the program just recently, talked about this maybe being a, a summer or a year of uh, little projects would be the focus, like sidewalks and, and road work. Uh, can you maybe go into that a little bit again? Yeah, uh, one of the things that we talked about at our annual planning retreat and again during the budget cycle again this year is that, uh, like any municipality, same with Matt Toon, uh, you know, uh, the little projects sometimes have a tendency to get onto a laundry list and sometimes it takes a while to get back to those. And uh, last year, recall, we had a big project on Harrison Street where we, we internally rebuilt an entire section of street from the ground up from 4th Street over to 6th Street. And it was a project that had been on the city's long range plan for a number of years. And I now know why, because it was pretty difficult and challenging. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, earth moving, a lot of retaining wall work. and. Uh, just some really challenging challenging conditions for us. So this summer uh, we're focusing a lot on uh, uh, street and sidewalk repairs. Uh, we've got a water main project uh, under underway right now on 10th Street and just a tremendous amount of sidewalk work actually. And Brandon, you're coming up uh, one year almost of uh, being the mayor of Charleston and uh, what from looking at the city budget for moving forward this year, uh, what were some of the things that you were looking forward to? Well, Really, there wasn't anything specifically looking forward to it. Still, was a little bit more of a learning experience at this level. Um, but I can tell you, from being a business owner myself and being around budgets and doing it with the, when I was on the chamber and some other boards, Scott and uh, Heather and the rest of the team, they do a phenomenal job. Um, I mean, I, I can't say good enough things about how they watch everything that goes in and out. And uh, I mean, they run it very, very well. So, you know, it makes my job on this end easier when you have such a strong team like we, we have. Okay, very good. We'll talk more about Charleston in a little bit with economic development. Let's uh, bring Tim and Kyle into the conversation. Mattoon as well, last Tuesday had uh, their second city council meeting for April and uh, the budget for the coming year was uh, also on, on the agenda. Uh, what transpired last Tuesday? Uh, very similar, at the end of March we put it on file. Uh, the first meeting in April, uh, April 5th, <coughs> uh, I had a public hearing at the council meeting and went through it. 
And then last uh, Tuesday night, we approved it. We have a surplus of 48,000. A um, little bit of struggle at the first after everybody's wish list. Uh, we had to make quite a few cuts, but uh, we were able to do so, put it in the surplus. And like Brandon had said about his staff, our staff worked really well in, in identifying what was necessity this year, what could be put off another year, uh, you know, what was kind of just a wish list. So uh, we were able to, to put it in perspective and, and get it with a $48,000 surplus. So. Tim, if I can ask you, it's a, a new year, a, a new budget, and uh, I think everybody's anticipating to look and see how it will turn out. Uh, what challenges did you see with this year's uh, budget? Well, as Kyle said, we have a lot of, uh, had to do some cutting. And one of the problems we have, of course, we don't know what's going to happen from Springfield. And we're hoping that our sources of revenue from the state will not be cut. But until we get a state budget, which who knows when that's going to happen, uh, we're just going with uh, uh, keeping our fingers crossed. Let me put it that way, that there will not be any uh, changes or any money that they will take. Now, having said that, uh, we got a notice the other day, as Charleston did, that we're going to have to pay back uh, $65,000 to the state. And, and when that news comes down to something like that where you find out and almost feels like a last second thing that, oh, we owe some money back to Springfield, uh, what, what was your reaction to that? I don't think I can say on air. That's, that's <laughs> perfectly fine. Uh, as far as uh, something else that we've talked about involving monies that Matthew has is you, you have monies from video gaming. So uh, how do those help with, with the budget and how do you really forecast those, Kyle? Our, our council did a very good job but when they first came out with those video gaming funds that they did not want to just let it go into the general fund. Uh, they wanted to make sure that it got spent uh, on projects that are on items that we haven't done as a city in the past. And just in this case, if, if the state ever took any money away from us, that money wasn't already put in the general fund, um, so to speak, as salaries or anything like that. So we, we divvied it up into five different categories, um, you know, paying extra towards pensions, demolitions, upkeep of buildings. Um, part of it goes to the reserves and then uh, the last section, just specialized equipment that we typically wouldn't buy. Okay, very good, thank you for that information on the budget. Let's stick with Matt Hoon and talk about some upcoming projects that you guys have going on. Let's start with uh, Marshall Avenue Road Work. I understand that's gonna be starting uh, very soon. Once school is out, it will. Okay. And that, that will be a three-year project. Uh, Kyle can probably know more about it than I do. Yeah, Marshall, we, Marshall, Marshall Avenue. Avenue, we will, 6th to 9th Street will be starting as soon as school lets out. We just let the bids for it. Um, a local contractor is the low bidder, so we'll make sure with all the dots are, all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed, and hopefully he'll start then as soon as school gets out and hopefully be completed before school gets back in. Well, uh, and, and uh, we're going to have to have the uh, intersection of 9th and Marshall completed because that it's a major thoroughfare that goes down to the middle school and the Williams School. But so that will be completed before uh, school begins. And then next year we'll go from uh, 9th to, I believe, 14th Street. Okay. And then the following year we'll go from 14th Street to 17th Street. So the whole street will be re, uh, reconstructed. And I, I was there recently to get some video and uh, it, definitely a lot of traffic. So barring any bad weather, hopefully it gets done on time. Right. Uh, let's uh, talk about Heritage Park. That's over at uh, 17th and Broadway. Uh, it's a project that we've mentioned uh, recently. Uh, where is that project going? It has actually begun construction already. Um, they're mo moving quite well. The uh, city did some of their portions in the alley already. And um, now the main contractor's in there moving dirt, uh, putting in the um, cisterns for the water feature. So um, progress is moving very well on that. Okay, very good. And sticking in that area, you guys, uh, when we talked briefly before uh, this uh, this airing here, is that more arts in the downtown. Is there anything you can elaborate on that, more arts in the downtown area? Uh, our arts and tourism, they're doing a wonderful job. They keep on bringing more and more things up. Actually, I, I believe, I don't know if it's this, I think it's this coming weekend that they will be having a, some little plays on Friday, Saturday, Sunday evening. Okay. And uh, yes, they're, they're doing really well of getting more use of what we have the Lonell room and the train depot and um, it's just exciting to have more people drawn to the downtown. And we hope to have uh, 
mural on the side of that building, which some people refer to as the Thrifty Building or the Bank Building there uh, just to the east of the uh, depot. Okay, very good. Beautiful murals there in downtown Mattoon. Uh, let's talk over about uh, North 6th Street, the uh, wastewater treatment facility that involves sewer work. What can you tell us, Kyle? Uh, that was a big project that was kind of forced upon us through the IEPA, but uh, it's a combined sewer uh, stormwater overflow. Uh, we had to do this satellite treatment facility to help separate that and treat the water, and it's a, a very large project that uh, be hopefully done towards the end of this year. Um, about twenty million dollar project, uh, probably actually about eighteen million dollar project, but uh, very, very costly. But it's well, you know, it's what needs to be done to to treat that water before it goes into the creeks. Okay, it had to be done. Uh, Tim, uh, we've talked uh, a couple times now about over Fourteenth Street across from the post office, the former Young Radiator plant. That demolition has been completed. Where are things moving with that? It has been completed. There were parts of buildings that were still there, but those have been removed. Um, there's still part of a fence that is there that I'd like to get removed because all it's doing is collecting trash. But we're working with the owner of the property and hopefully he will allow that to be removed or will actually remove it. So uh, we're very pleased to have that. It's been a project that we've been working on for many, many, many years. And Many people were involved in getting that done, so I'm very pleased with that. Satisfactory project. Um, let's talk about something we've also talked about uh, a couple times, uh, the new public works building. But first of all, it's kind of a two-part question. Um, remind folks at home where the new public works building will be, and once that's up and running, what will happen to the current public works building? Okay, new public works building will be east of Logan on DeWitt Avenue. Um, kind of east of Mervis Recycling, and uh, we hope to have it under roof by the end of the year. Um, it's a it's a good project. Weather's been a little wet this spring, so we're hoping that things dry up and we can get started. Um, once we get that one completed, we do have the old Public Works building that's going to be slated to be torn down, and uh, hopefully we'll have our bike trail uh, go through that property and extend it to the YMCA. And one of the advantages of where we're putting the new public works building, it uh, adjoins our yard waste facility. So in the future, if we need to expand, we can expand into that area. Okay. So it's a, it, it's a good project there. And uh, so I think that's a good location for it because we can't do have expansion uh, possibilities. And the uh, current facility is at 12th and Richmond. Correct. Correct. Very good. Uh, let's go over by the mall, and I understand that a uh, Denny's restaurant will be in the former Ponderosa. Can you yes. tell us about that? Uh, they came in, they've pulled permits, they're actually starting to do some work on the outside. Uh, it, everybody's been asking, is it still on, is it still on, because they've been doing work on the inside and they haven't seen much. But yes, uh, actually they started working on, on the outside now, so uh, we're hoping <coughs> towards the end of, the, of May that they will be opening up their doors for people to go in there and eat. All right, plenty of places to eat around that area. So <laughs> one more little bit of variety. Uh, and I understand that you uh, both mentioned to me there's a new owner at the former Days Inn, is that correct? That's correct. A young couple uh, have bought the Days Inn and they are going to rehab it and uh, we wish them much success. Okay, I'm kind of going all over the place in Mattoon, so let's track back toward the downtown and you can't miss the work that's being done at the Casey Summers dealership. It feels like the place is doubling. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the timetable on completion of their new addition? I'm not sure there is a timetable. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure either, but uh, I would say um, probably in the next three months that they'll be pretty close. Um, they're actually working on getting their sign put up for the GMC dealership. You know, it's all enclosed now. They're working on the concrete lot in front of the building. Uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful building and a nice asset for the downtown area. It's very large in size. Okay, some, I guess some more automotive news. I guess this is the automotive section of, of Mattoon right here. The Mattoon Tire and Auto was bought. Uh, that's down on uh, Lakeland Boulevard. What, what can you tell us there? Uh, uh, Roy Smith, the Honda dealership down in Effingham, had bought the property. Uh, I think he's putting new used cars sells there. Um, be nice uh, asset to that south end. I think he's going to be expanding the parking area to have more used cars there. And it's just uh, uh, hopefully helps some more development down that south end on Lakeland Boulevard. 
Okay, and the one thing I want to ask you, because I think if maybe a few people are curious, I'm curious, um, the current Cody's uh, there on, by the interstate, uh, I've seen many cars there in front of the building, uh, maybe there's things you can't say, but uh, what, what's going on with that, because it, it's still currently Cody's. Yeah, uh, actually they just closed last Friday okay. on at uh, Fujiyama's down in Effingham, that same owner bought it, and plans to open that up, hopefully be open by Christmas. Um, he has, I think, believe nine stores around central and southern Illinois. So I believe there's one in Effingham. So yeah. Effingham Mattoon connection with a couple of uh, businesses going there. Uh, Want to ask you a little bit about that specific area? The all the businesses by the interstate. That's the east part of Mattoon. Uh, is there still room for growth in that area? And is that an area you're you're, you're targeting with all that you've seen over the last couple of decades? all these businesses, um, is that a place that you can, can still still continue to look? Yes, most definitely. Actually, the, um, the majority of the land around that area uh, has just sold recently to a new, for a new buyer. Um, and then there's been several people just uh, entertaining, uh, trying to buy some land off of the new owner. So hopefully, you know, something will come of it. You never know. Um, it's all real preliminary, but uh, it is a good area. There's water and sewer out there, so hopefully we'll see some development in the next couple of years in that area. Very good. I think we touched all points of Matt Toon there. Kyle and Tim, thank you very much. Let's uh, bring Brandon and Scott, and you guys have plenty on your plate as well. I want to start with uh, the Domino's location on Lincoln Avenue at the former Domino's, and uh, I noticed there was some uh, demolition going on there uh, just Friday the 22nd. Uh, so what's going on there with that project? Uh, new uh, new owner has acquired the property. Uh, I think they closed on the property back <coughs> in February. Uh, and yes, uh, Drake, uh, Dennis Drake was in there on Friday. Uh, and by the time I was on my way to work, he already had the building down. So it didn't take him very long. Now he spent a few days uh, here over the weekend getting, uh, getting all the, the construction debris removed, uh, digging out the original parking area, and then building the base uh, that will become the new the new home to the to the new Domino's. And Brandon, uh, that Domino's location seemed like it's been vacant forever to have something go up there and uh, new looking, that's got to be a, a major plus. Oh, it's a huge plus. I mean, that's directly, you know, right there connected to the university, right across the street from Old Main. Um, and that other building, you know, it's been there empty for a while, kind of an eyesore. So it's going to be great to see this new building. The picture was put in the, in the paper. So, I mean, everyone can see and it's going to be seating in there. I believe it's 20 seats. Um, so, you know, a new look there on the corner and it's going to be just a fantastic Fantastic project, and that's something that'll be open by. Was I, did I hear fall? Was what I read? Yeah, so, I think I think the owners would have loved to have had the new Domino's open by the time the students return uh, uh, in the fall for the fall semester. But <coughs> in talking with him, it sounds as though uh, uh, just given the construction schedule, that uh, more than likely going to be open probably closer to to uh, Labor Day or maybe uh, right around in there sometime. Okay, another business uh, coming to Charleston. There've been all these coming to Charleston. Where is that location, and when when might we see that? Um, they're, I don't. They've already. Yeah, they've they've acquired the property just recently. Acquired yeah. that property from Steve Drake. Uh, it is going to be uh, right off of Hawthorne at the corner of Hawthorne Drive and Lincoln Avenue. It'll be directly across from Walmart, and for some local folks, uh, across the across the street there from the Adams Funeral Chapel. Uh, and they are, uh, they're hoping to get under construction uh, in May and would like to be open late this fall. Cam, I may want to ask this question maybe a little bit later, but uh, something you, uh, a phrase that you used, Scott, when we were talking before we uh, taped this program, doing this program here, is that Charleston's kind of becoming a wagon wheel with uh, different pieces, uh, all these there on the east side of town, where you have not only the residents of Charleston can benefit from, but some of the other outlying towns. So maybe you could talk about that. Yeah, I think one of the one of the attractive aspects of that that particular location for Aldi's is that, you know, there's a lot of folks from Charleston that do drive to Mattoon to shop at Aldi's, but they felt like there was uh, some opportunities on the east side of the county uh, that they could attract to a Charleston location. So I think they they see this as an opportunity to attract some more folks from Ashmore, from Oakland. Uh, maybe from, from, from down in Cumberland County on the south side of Charleston. So I, I think they see this as a, as a growth potential for the east side of Coles County and maybe a little bit further. And of course, a lot of people are, are, are commuting back and forth from Charleston. 
uh, to the east side of the county and they'll stop there on their way home. Uh, but they definitely feel like uh, they'll attract some, some uh, customers that would uh, maybe come in and shop at the Walmart, but will also shop at Aldi. Okay. And you'll notice that they like to be, uh, they like to be near, near uh, a, a super center uh, area like a Walmart center. Uh, you'll find that they're usually pretty close by. The one in Champaign's out in front of the Walmart on North Prospect. So I, that's kind of one of the one I was thinking about when I was yeah. picturing it. Very good. And our store will look very similar to, to that particular store in Champaign. All right, very good. Uh, nearby that, we have uh, Windy City Pizza. What is, what is that? Uh, there's a new uh, uh, pizza, that's gonna, uh, pizza restaurant that's going to be going in uh, uh, right across from uh, the Pilsen's Automotive Center there at Lincoln and uh, 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 Route 130. So uh, I always call it the Aero Travel Center, mm -hmm. uh, being a Charleston <laughs> uh, person. And so, uh, but they're going to be locating there, uh, uh, be uh, in there with, uh, I believe Sakis is in there, and I still, I think there's a hair salon back on the back side of that as well. Yes, I know the facility, the area very well. Mm -hmm. You also have some gas stations that have made some improvements, uh, but I want to get to uh, 18th Street and the things going on with 18th Street. So that's some things you want to talk about, and uh, I could list the things that we talked to ha talked beforehand. But if you guys want to go ahead and wherever you want to start on 18th Street, what are the things going on on 18th Street in we, Charleston? We might need an hour to talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's a, it, this is amazing, uh, seeing the growth that's on 18th Street. I mean, we can start at either end, but you have uh, Rex Don, their building, and it's just a phenomenal looking. I don't know if you've been down there by it. but My it's daughter just, actually just asked me, what is it's, that? It's gorgeous. Um, and then as you, you, so you have them as you keep on going, Casey's, um, there's um, next to Albin. There's a groundbreaking that we're, I'm going to next week on, is that a memory care facility? Mm -hmm. um, then yeah, Casey's, the Windy City Pizza. And then as we go on down, we have um, obviously the huge development that's going down there by the Phillips family. Um, and then the 18th Street Garden Center. So, you know, there, there's, did I miss any? I think, you, I think you got them all. You know, there's, a, there's just a lot of stuff going on on 18th Street and I get the question, why 18th Street? You know, just right place, right time. I mean, property there is priced right, and when property is priced right, people's gonna, you know, build. I, I give a lot of uh, uh, props to um, uh, Mr. Runyon there too, uh, because he organized, helped organize the 18th Street um, block party and things of that nature, and that's just drawing a lot of attention to that area. And now we see it. You know, it's just it's it's booming. I mean, millions and millions of dollars are being spent right there along 18th Street. Scott, you had mentioned the revitalization of the uh, 18th Street corridor. I think you'd said something to the effect you had been at a retreat and then all of a sudden there's this, uh, we need to focus on 18th Street. Yeah. Uh, what, can you maybe explain that? Well, we've been talking about the redevelopment of 18th Street. We actually tossed around the idea of an additional TIF district or maybe a business district along 18th Street. And, and as some of these businesses started to look at 18th Street for possible expansion or growth opportunities, some of those discussions were had with some of those property owners. But uh, there was not a TIF overlay or a business district overlay, and all the activity has really gone on without any of those any of those types of incentives. But uh, I know I grew up real close to 18th Street, actually behind what what used to be called the old Fountain Blue on Hans Drive. And so for me personally, I can still remember the Checker gas station. I can still remember the Heritage House. I can still remember uh, the Tasty Freeze, uh, you know, and all those, all those places there on 18th Street. I, I ran around in those all day, every day after school. So to see what's occurred on 18th Street is just tremendous. And I agree with, with the mayor, you know, Steve Runyon, uh, the bike and hike folks, the 18th Street Garden Shop, uh, twice as nice, everyone down through there, uh, the bank, uh, uh, everybody down there has gotten really involved with this 18th Street uh, festival and they're, uh, you know, the, if you come down there when that festival's going on, you'll find hundreds of people down there walking the street, uh, they're, they're checking out all the businesses, there's food, there's vendors, uh, it's just a really good atmosphere. Uh, very well attended, and I think that has really helped generate a lot of interest for those for those uh, owners of those properties along 18th Street. It's very attractive. Again, it's a major thoroughfare. There's a lot of activity on, on, on Route 130, really always has been. And so I think that there's been some success there with the expansion of Casey's. Gavina Graphics built their new yeah, addition. Gavina. We did forget that one. I apologize to, to the folks there. That is a huge expansion, I it's might add. Building. Uh, yes. And obviously for Casey's to expand, they wouldn't be expanding if they weren't profitable and they weren't doing well at that location. 
Uh, like you said, the Rexdon corporate office, uh, that new interconnection there that we're going to have to the Lake Trails over to Sister City Park. Uh, there's just a, a number of things. And, and again, like the mayor mentioned, that project that Reggie and his family um, at, at the corner of Harrison and, and Route 130 there is just unbelievable. And they're, they're under construction now and a, a lot of work there in just the last 60 days. So just a lot happening down there. Very busy to say the least. Let's go down 130, 18th Street just a little bit and talk about Lake Charleston. And it seems like there's always a group on the weekends that's out there helping clean the trails. So talk about the, this sudden movement toward the trails at Lake Charleston. Well, one of the things that we've talked about for many, many years, and honestly, it was a bit of a dream uh, with our park board and, and council, a lot of our long range planning retreats was this idea of getting a walking trail all the way around Lake Charleston. Wouldn't that be cool? And we used to kind of sit around and talk about that. Uh, kind of laugh about it and uh, over the course of the last 10 years there's been a couple of land acquisitions, the Woodyard Park track, uh, some property north of the water plant uh, and a couple of other small pieces and parcels that we've put together that have made that possible. And while the acquisition of property, you know, contiguous property certainly lend itself to, to making that a reality, there were a number of big, big obstacles in the way. There are a number, a couple of coves in there we had to you know, we had to install the bridge on and some riprap and do some pretty cool stuff in the last 12 to 18 months, but our team has met the challenge. And then Brendan Lynch and the folks at Bike and Hike and these volunteers, we, our team at City Hall, they really got behind it, they embraced it, and they've done a tremendous job in the last 12 to 18 months, creating and constructing some new trails and uh, really energizing the community. I, I, I'll tell you what, the volunteers that are showing up, these volunteer stewards, these trail stewards that we've got on, uh, on, on uh, really uh, involved here in the last few months to come out and pick up garbage and do trail maintenance. Without them, uh, we just wouldn't have this. Very good. And Brandon, I want to ask you because we've talked about 18th Street. So we have this whole eastern side of Charleston now. We have all these things developing where as a kid, I remember there, I grew up on Garfield. There was no Casey's General Store. It was just a plot of grass. Mm -hmm. So now you have all this involvement on the eastern side of Charleston. What do you, what do you think about that? And, and how it's going to help Charleston moving forward. Well, I think it just shows that, um, you know, in this tough time that the whole county is going through, especially with Charleston, with the, the Eastern stuff, that Charleston is still a bright spot on the map. And then, you know, listening to the things that are coming to Mattoon, I would say that Coles County is a bright spot on the map. And, and we forget sometimes it's easy to, to get caught up in the negativity of all the things that are, uh, you know, this is going on. But really, when you get down to it and look, this is some of the biggest growth that Charleston's seen in, in years all at one time. So that tells me that there's something, there's something here, you know, this is a special place and we have, a, you know, we, we have this university here in our backyard and so this is fantastic. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm super pleased with everything that's been going on. All right, you helped make a nice segue to our, uh, start our next segment of the show and this will be kind of be a interactive round table where anybody can jump in and, and have a comment here and uh, stories examples will help as well um, so let's start off with higher education in Coles County and uh, just this past Friday we had some uh, legislation go through with a, with a bill that uh, was nearly unanimous and uh, Governor Rauner said that he would sign it and he kept that promise just today uh, this final Monday in April here um, and it will kind of help uh, public universities and colleges here for a little bit. And uh, uh, President Glassman was uh, on a, one of our radio programs on HitMix uh, 88.9 WEIU, and uh, it's just the first step moving forward. Um, your guys' reaction to this bill pat passing, it, it affects Eastern Illinois University and Lakeland College. Well, I think it's obviously great that we got some, some funding. Um, I still would like to see a budget so that this isn't something that we have to go through again. But once again, looking on the positive side of things, at least uh, at least some money is coming in this, you know, to the universities and to Lakeland. It and looks like progress may be being made in Springfield, and maybe eventually we will get a uh, budget. So it's it's a movement in the right direction, mm -hmm. and certainly it is very beneficial for both uh, Eastern and Lakeland. And EIU and Lakeland, as we know, are, are uh, both uh, major employers in Coles County, uh, and those folks, some of those folks reside in, in Charleston and Mattoon. Uh, tough times have forced uh, both institutions to uh, relieve people of their jobs, which means they may have had to move out of Charleston and Mattoon. Um, and Brandon, a comment that you made to me uh, recently was that uh, Charleston improving itself 
can also help Eastern. Uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, we're, I, I've said this so many times since I took over as mayor. In my opinion, Charleston and EIU are together, right? We're one. And, you know, when one leg starts hurting, your other leg starts compensating. So we feel um, that we're, we're going to hold up, you know, while Eastern goes through this. We're focusing even harder than ever to continue to have the community grow and to be a bright spot so that when Eastern, you know, starts bouncing back, look at all the growth. It just gives more to bring uh, people to the area, to draw people to Charleston and, and to draw students to uh, EIU and, and even, you know, with, with the, the changes that Matt Toon's making. So. And Tim, if you, there's anything you can add, you also have Lakeland right there, uh, southern part of Mattoon Lakeland Boulevard. So you have not only residents from Tr uh, Eastern Illinois University that, that work there, they, some live in Mattoon, you also have Lakeland. So uh, what can you add to the fact that trying to maybe improve Mattoon can also help those institutions in some way? Well, I think Lakeland has added a great deal to the city of Mattoon. And of course, uh, many of those students at Lakeland will stay in the area, whether it's Mattoon, Charleston, or within the Lakeland College District. So I think that's important because those young people are getting their education there, and they're going to be uh, getting into jobs that are going to be, you know, relatively high paying jobs. And most importantly, they're staying in the area because we want to keep the people here. Uh, so often we hear that the students or younger people are, are leaving the area, and we don't want to see that. We want to bring them back here, mm -hmm. keep them here. And we saw um, not too long after our last taping of, of both Charleston and Mattoon, uh, both, both you gentlemen, Brandon and Tim, uh, appeared at a, a, a little gathering at Old Main uh, at the end of February mm -hmm. to show uh, the economic impact that uh, Eastern Illinois has on, on Mattoon and Charleston oh, there. Absolutely. Yep. Very good. So from higher education, let's move over to uh, medical facilities. We have Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System located between Charleston and Mattoon on Route 16. New, ad new additions adjacent to the hospital, and there's some more work being done right now. Uh, Sarah Bush obviously provides health care and jobs, and, and when a major employer near your town, such as Sarah Bush, which is, seems almost equidistant to both towns, that has to make both, both towns feel good about your major, one of your major health providers improving itself. Well, the Regional Cancer Center is going up, and uh, that's going to be a boon to this area as well. Okay. And like I said, a lot of uh, citizens from both communities are employed there at Sarah Bush and travel back and forth. And, uh, you know, the Route 16 there is highly traveled. There's almost as many cars on that daily as there is on 57. So uh, I expect to see more. Uh, development out there in the future. Yeah, it's fantastic for a community, you know, for Charleston Mattoon to have such a uh, excellent facility right there. And with all that traffic, there is a new stoplight that's coming there on Loxa Road. And I think that's going to help out tremendously with the increased traffic. Because yeah, if you get out there on 16 in the middle of the day sometimes, I mean, it is just, there's a lot of cars. And then after five o'clock, it's just, it's constant. So, well, I think that whole area between Mattoon and Charleston will grow. And Kyle and I were talking on the way over here. I think what stopped Mattoon from growing east was sort of a barrier was the interstate and what has kept Charleston from growing to the west were the twin bridges. But now, as I say, the businesses have jumped over those mm -hmm. two barriers. And so probably won't see it in my lifetime, but I think we'll see a time when the two communities will be growing together almost like a Champaign-Urbana, Bloomington Normal, because we are moving in that uh, that direction, and I think it's a good thing. I do too. And you mentioned the Loxa Road stoplight. Uh, people may say that's, oh, another stoplight at that spot, but when, when, when might we see that stoplight? Is there any knowledge of when that might, might go up? You know, Scott? The traffic signal uh, construction's underway right now. Okay. Uh, so I know last week they poured the uh, pedestals and, and uh, over the last couple weeks uh, bored in all the uh, 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 the uh, underground cable. Uh, I think it was probably the piping for the underground cabling. I noticed they set the uh, panel uh, pad for uh, all the traffic controls and uh, they'll be, uh, be waiting on the mast arms and all the lighting to get that installed. So that project is underway uh, as we speak. Uh, as a specific date when they're going to have the actual signals activated, I don't know the answer to that. That's all controlled by IDOT, but they are under construction uh, right now. And not only will that intersection uh, impact the hospital, but also the, the business park just to the east. 
and that area I can remember 20 years ago when there was just a dirt road there and now all of a sudden you have these different businesses. Is that an area of focus to continue to grow? It is and I'll tell you the folks that are in the business park are thrilled about the traffic light because it's very challenging for those folks that operate a business in the business park to be able to get out onto 16 during the day safely. Uh, you'll see a lot of folks uh, sort of sputter out into the middle there between the two <laughs> between the four lanes and and there's been a number of accidents there and so I know for them uh, you know Dustin Sons operates out of there there's several several companies that operate Coca-Cola there's several that operate out of there that'll make that transition out on a 16 much safer and I think that'll make that whole business park area more attractive uh, to companies that might might be looking at that location uh, for expansion or, or construction of a new of a new building or an office, uh, a warehouse, what have you. So I, I see that as a real plus uh, for the business park. All right, so positives just from that one stoplight, that, that intersection locks a road. Uh, let's move on to water and fire protection, two separate things. Uh, both towns are connected with the water connection, and how does that benefit both towns? Well, I can tell you, and I know Kyle can, can, can echo these comments, something that our, form, that our public works directors, both in Mattoon and Charleston, worked on a number of years ago, uh, was that we used to joke there were a couple hydrants back in behind the water plant, and one of them was green and yellow for Mattoon green wave colors, and we had the <laughs> Charleston one that was painted red or gold or something like that. And so we used to joke about it. Maybe one was a little taller than the other, and we'd have these joint council meetings and joke about my hydrant's bigger than yours, or this or that or the other. And, and so, uh, you know, while we were so close, we got to thinking that, um, boy, wouldn't it be nice if we could interconnect those water supplies, because we're both right there at the hospital, uh, and, and use that as a, as a backup system to feed both communities in the event of some catastrophic event, maybe a tower burst or we get a water main break or God forbid a, some sort of a weather event, maybe a tornado. And no, the backup isn't intended for every single household in town to fire up your, your shower and, and every restaurant be open and all that, but it is intended to get some water to the, to the two communities and it runs either direction. Uh, and so the community's invested in some equipment at the, at the hospital and now with the flip of a switch, and I'm making it sound a little easier than it really is, but Charleston can provide water to Mattoon and Mattoon can provide water to Charleston. I know your next question is going to be, gee Scott, have you ever used it? And I can tell you that both communities to date have used the water interconnect. There was a time when we had a water main break and uh, we needed to have some backup water pressure and supply from Mattoon. And I know uh, Mattoon's had the same situation. Right. Yeah. Kyle, any examples of, of how Mattoon's benefit, benefited from this water connection? Well, we had uh, issues out at uh, one of the lakes, like Mattoon, about pumping water to our treatment facility. And uh, we had struggles with the contractor to get out there and get it done. And, you know, we had plenty of water in the tank, but we were getting a little nervous. And we had asked, hey, can we open it up just to make sure? And, uh, you know, we did open up the system. Everything was fine. Um, and it just it bought us some time that, you know, we may or may not have needed, but it's nice to have that. So, and we can rely on each other for that help, and it's it's great to be able to have that. It's really, uh, really a bonus for both communities uh, for our for our fire rating as well to have that interconnect. And I can I can assure you that the folks at the hospital are happy we have it as well. <laughs> yes, I have I have heard a few things about that as well. Uh, fire protection. Uh, both towns have multiple stations. Uh, how do both towns uh, benefit from uh, the fire protections? Uh, I'll, I'll mention one thing is we have a RIT team in both Mattoon and Charleston that when they're called out to a structure fire, uh, if it's in Charleston, Mattoon's RIT team will come over and vice versa if there's fire in Mattoon. And that, you know, gives us a couple different things. It gives us a better rating for our ISO. It helps the manpower issues, but it's also just a backup. If we've got guys in a, in a building that's on, you know, for fire, Charleston's on standby in case one of our men go down that they can rush in and help and the other guys can still be fighting the fire. So it's, it's safety for our men. It, it helps, you know, uh, our men focusing on the fire to get the fires put out uh, safely and, and save the surrounding areas as well. Well, in fact, this morning uh, we did have a structure fire in Mattoon oh. and Charleston, of course, came over uh, to assist, as, as Kyle said, not to really fight the fire but to be there in the event that uh, one of our firefighters would be down in the structure. They can go in and our men can continue to fight the fire. 
but and, that happened just And I learned morning. at the joint council meeting that we held together that uh, lives have been saved because the fire department's working right. together. So, I mean, that's pretty, I mean, that's significant. Well, there was an incident uh, recently where uh, uh, Charleston Fire Department came over to assist in a structure fire and they were on their way back to Charleston after the fire and there was an injury uh, at one of the plants in Mattoon and it just happened that the Charleston uh, Fire Department uh, personnel were closer than we were at the time and they got there and started uh, helping the uh, person who was injured in that plant. So that's another way in which it just happened that, the, uh, that we had that assistance. So you hear stories all the time about firefighters and, and uh, everybody has a different role. It's definitely a team effort. So to have that collaborative effort between both towns benefits everyone for, mm -hmm. sure. for sure. Tim, I want to ask you about the Safe Streets program. What is it and how does it work? Well, uh, not too long ago, uh, Police Chief Jeff Branson initiated uh, what we call the Safe Streets program, uh, Safe Streets Task Force, and there are two officers dedicated from Mattoon PD, Charleston PD, uh, Coles County Sheriff's Department, EIU PD, and Coles County Probation. And on a random basis, uh, they will be together. Uh, they will go to maybe uh, locations in the two communities or in the county where maybe their crime has been more than normal or where they have heard maybe there is a gathering, a large gathering of people. Uh, they maybe go through uh, uh, an area, maybe uh, an apartment complex. Uh, they all show up at one time, a, string, a show of force. They do not answer the regular calls, but this is a specific group. And uh, it's, it's worked very well. And, the, and I'm told that some of the people in these various locations where they have gone have thanked them for doing that. And so you might, so these people are in uniform, uh, they're in marked cars. And so sometimes people may say, well, what's a Charleston police officer doing in Mattoon? They don't have any jurisdiction. Well, they do. <laughs> There's an agreement that uh, all of the uh, police officers in the county uh, have uh, rest powers within the county. So uh, it, it's been a very good program, uh, working together cooperatively. Uh, the Coles County Sheriff's Department now has a uh, certified reconstructionist that can work on accidents where there may be uh, injuries or maybe a death or something. And that individual, uh, Sheriff Rankin, has uh, said can be used by Charleston, Mattoon, or or wherever. So there's a great deal of cooperation between the Mattoon, Charleston uh, Sheriff's Department and the other law enforcement agencies uh, in the county. So another team effort there with that as well as like we mentioned with the fire protection units working together. Well um, I know something also that okay. happens between uh, Charleston and EIU PD. Uh, on occasion uh, the Lakeland police will come in and assist back up uh, our police when you know we really need them and they have a lot of calls. All right, very good. I uh, want to ask you about working with other organizations or groups within the county, and if, if you want to name any of those organizations, how, who do you work with, and, and how does that benefit uh, one town or both towns? Well, this morning, like Mayor Gover and I were at a meeting with Coles together, and then you had mentioned uh, regional. Coles regional County planning. Regional Planning. Um, so, I mean, once again, Coles County, uh, collaboration, I mean, all together. Okay, very good. Any project, any, uh, Tim? I was gonna say by virtue of our office, uh, we are automatically on the uh, Coles uh, Together Board of Directors. And another thing I might just mention, the four of us are sitting here together. Uh, we meet once a month mm -hmm. uh, for lunch and we talk about uh, common problems or concerns or what's going on in Springfield or what can benefit Mattoon, what can benefit Charleston and it's been a very good relationship. Well, I can tell you in the d short time that I've been mayor, it was it was great to be able to do that, to step in and, and learn. Tim's been able to, to, you know, give me some insight on some different things. So it's been a, it's been a blessing from my standpoint, learning and seeing Charleston and Matt Toon come together. We were sitting up here together um, and, you know, no punches have been thrown yet, but I will say I did hear when the water was opened up that when our water went that way, it did taste better. <laughs> now there may be some punches thrown after all. Okay, all right, all right. I just had to get that in there. Well, and Brandon and I frequently, and I know Kyle and uh, uh, Scott, frequently, you know, pick up the phone and call one another. Mm -hmm. 
this is my next, my, I didn't even have to ask the oh. question. You guys got right into the whole communication aspect. In addition to meeting monthly, uh, once a year, and I asked you guys on your last episodes was the once a year joint uh, city council meeting. It has to be such a unique atmosphere to have multiple people from both cities in one location. What is that like? Well, I can tell you, I learned a lot at the last one. Um, this was the second one that I was able to take part of since I've been on council and then one as mayor. And you, you learn just how much the two cities do work together. Uh, you hear from all the departments, the fire, um, police, public works. And, you know, I mean, th there's a lot of collaboration that goes on back and forth between the two cities, um, even on the administration levels, you know. So it's uh, there's there's a lot that goes on that people do not realize. I mean, we're, we, we joke back and forth about who's better at this or that, but ultimately we've come together as a pretty good and strong team. A lot of and, uh, we lot meet of at the uh, Lifespan Center once or twice a right. year, and I mentioned the four of us meet, but on a monthly basis, our department heads uh, meet as well. There's a lot of collaboration, and, and again, uh, you know, a lot of it maybe folks don't see, you know, but there's a lot of meetings between police and fire personnel. Hey, uh, both of our, all of our ambulances, I think, are fairly well outfitted, almost identically. So if there's a major scene where our crews show up, our guys can hop in the back of the Mattoon ambulance, vice versa, Mattoon, Mattoon ambulance personnel in the back of our box and pretty much operate seamlessly between the two departments and have done that on a number of uh, high profile incidents, particularly up on 57. But there's a lot of equipment sharing in the street department and the utilities department and public works. I know in the parks maintenance division, you know, our folks do a lot of work with Kurt Stretch over in Mattoon. They, you know, they've got a particular piece of equipment that maybe we both don't need, but they use it for two weeks out of the year and then we can borrow it. So there's just really a lot of that that goes on that people may not realize. And, and along with our police departments as well. I mean, you know, crim crime scene investigation, there's no sense of both cities having some of the same equipment. We, we've worked together. Hey, somebody buy this piece of equipment you know, Mattoon buys this, Charleston buys that, and we can and share those. And uh, it's worked out real good. I mean, both cities have got uh, people that have been trained in that, and, and we help each other out on the major uh, Well, and here a incidents. while back, uh, pardon me, a uh, while back, uh, we had one piece of equipment rather expensive, and several of the departments, Charleston, Mattoon, EI, UPD, and Sheriff's Department went together and put some of the money together, and they were able to buy that one piece of equipment that individually we could not have afforded to buy. And some of the things that these things you're telling us about, like Scott said, that are kind of behind the scenes. That's why we have you gentlemen here to tell us <laughs> right. some of those examples and people have maybe a little bit different perspective of how mm -hmm. one town and or both towns work together. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. Uh, my next question I kind of thought of after I invited you gentlemen here and uh, we'll see how this answer goes. <laughs> uh, over the years, uh, dating myself, so about 35 years in Coles County growing up, I've always thought on those many car rides what would Charleston Mattoon look like if it was all together, businesses, houses? Could it happen and what would it take? I, I think it's not a matter of could, I think it will. Um, it, you know, like Tim alluded to earlier, we're already starting to see that. And as the cities, you know, um, collaborate the way we do and then the growing, I think we're gonna see them start growing together towards that area and see it come together. And once again, when, I don't know, but we're already starting to see houses built um, and they're coming towards the, the middle there between the county. And, and both cities recognized that early on and I think it was probably around 93, they put a corridor development committee together to review any development between that area. So that way it fits in with both Mattoon and Charleston. Mattoon Charleston put the, the requirements uh, in place so that we wouldn't have a residential section here, a commercial section here, or, or a, a manufacturing here. And, and that way is just a planned development. And you know, I think we'll see that and maybe some future developments on 1000 North, uh, a corridor plan like that as well. And uh, I haven't mentioned this yet, but one little neat thing I found out uh, talking to you guys before this, uh, this gathering we have here is that all four of you are from Charleston or Mattoon. So you grew up in the town that you're representing. I think that's pretty neat. Is there anything that comes to mind when I, you hear that and, and you're, you have a grasp, obviously, of the town that you're representing, leading, but you also, considering Charleston, Mattoon, and the proximity, uh, you certainly kind of understand the other towns. So mm -hmm. 
I mean, that's one neat little thing there. I know from, from my perspective, uh, both Kyle and I are fairly close in age, and, and uh, having grown up in Charleston and Kyle and Matt Toon, uh, you know, things started to change about the time we were, we were kind of moving through the school system. My parents are from Charleston, and I'm sure Tim and probably your parents can remember some of the days back in the 60s, maybe where we didn't get along so well. Uh, and I think a lot of that centered around sports and jokingly about the hospital and its location. And there's all kinds of things that, that get thrown around in, in different, uh, different settings. But uh, I can tell you that as long as I've worked for the city, I think our personnel has got along very well with Matt Toons. And I honestly can tell you that over the last 15 to 20 years, it's been better than ever. And, and probably in the last 10 to 15, uh, better than I can ever remember in the 20-some 20, 20 years I've worked for the city. Um, there are no barriers. I mean, yes, you know, Matt Toon's located nicely along 57, and they've got a lot more of the retail than we have, uh, but we've got EIU, and there's certainly some things that, that uh, businesses are going to look to locate in Charleston more so than they would in, in Matt Toon. But we all benefit. Um, you know, everybody benefits when there's a new manufacturing business. People are going to go to Charleston schools or Mattoon schools. They're going to shop in Charleston. They're going to eat out in Mattoon. We all benefit. We benefit greatly from both Lakeland and the universities. Uh, you know, extracurricular activities and sporting events and all things that happen on a campus like this, and both communities benefit. Uh, so I can tell you that Kyle and I, we make it a point to make sure that our teams talk a lot, they work together, they share equipment, they share resources like the mayor mentioned, share pieces of equipment, buy things, be smart about those purchases, buy together when we can uh, to get our costs down. There's just a lot of things going on that I can tell you that being from Charleston, knowing the folks in Mattoon and who to call and who to reach out to, there are no barriers really, there just aren't. No. I'm in a unique position in a way. Uh, my maternal great-grandparents came here before the Civil War to Mattoon, but also I spent 32 years teaching at Eastern Illinois University, so I've sort of got my foot in both Mattoon and Charleston. So I know a lot of people in Charleston because uh, I have been here for all of those years as well. And I think, I, like uh, Scott said, I've seen those barriers broken down. When I first came over here, I mean, you almost didn't want to say you were from Mattoon, but uh, <laughs> that's no longer the case, no. and it's wonderful. Yeah. And it, it, it is a true honor, and I say this uh, sincerely, to be able to serve this community. Um, came back here in 2006 after graduating from chiropractic school, and you know, I, people asked me, did you ever see yourself being the mayor? And I always said, maybe at 54 instead of 34, but you know, uh, we're placed in certain positions at, the, at certain times, and uh, you know, now that I've been able to do this and be able to do it in my hometown, where now I have a business, I'm raising my own children in places that uh, there has been a Combs working at the city since 1952. And so I get to carry, you know, a torch on that way. But uh, it, it, it's just, it's amazing. And then to see what's happening in Coles County and, uh, and then, in, you know, me specifically in Charleston, it's just so, I don't know, there's just so much good and so much positive that's actually going on, and, uh, and we're starting to focus on that more, you know, and I, 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 that means a lot to, to me and to all of us sitting up here, you know, all this positive stuff that we get to sit up here and talk about that maybe not everyone realizes, and hopefully this show, and I appreciate you being able to do this, can, can bring a lot of this to light. Very good, and and maybe with uh, some of this news with Eastern Illinois, maybe this is, and also the, all the businesses that we talked about, whether they be uh, old businesses improving or new businesses coming to the communities, there's obviously a lot of positive things moving forward. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, we just have a few uh, short minutes left, and I think we did a pretty good job with the roundtable discussion. Appreciate <laughs> your comments. And uh, it's the time to leave with some final comments, maybe something you want to reiterate uh, that we talked about, or just something that's popped up in your head. We'll go Kyle and then Scott and then Tim and Brandon. Kyle first. Uh, just like you know, they were saying it's been mentioned that you know not everyone knows what's going on behind the scenes. Economic development. We're always trying to get new businesses, different businesses in our communities. And uh, you know there is a little bit of competing, so to speak, between the communities. But what's good for one is really good for both because you know we're only 12 miles down the road. People are traveling back and forth, and it's easier to get to Matt Tune or Charleston to buy something than Champaign or Effingham. So if we continue to work together, people want to know what we're doing. We can't always say we're meeting with developers. 
and and that's one thing they want. They want it to be quiet because you know prices go up higher if they if someone knows. So it, it's it, you know we do work a lot, we work hard at it, and we are trying to improve both communities. And uh, I think we will get the job done. So. Thank you, Kyle and. Scott, your final comments? I just, uh, again, appreciate the opportunity. I like what the mayor says. There's just a lot of good things going on. Uh, I know that things have been a little bit challenging in Charleston here in the last uh, 12 months or so, uh, and I understand that. Uh, and, and I think we're going to turn things around. And, and, and like we've said here today, there's been a lot of positive things happening on 18th Street and a couple other locations in town. And, and I've got to believe that those companies put a lot of thought in uh, into that before they made the decision to pull the trigger. So uh, I think we're going to turn things around, and I, I'm excited about it. Thank you, Scott. Tim? Well, as Kyle mentioned, uh, it's been about a week or so ago, talking about economic development uh, on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we met with four different out-of-town developers. And these are the kinds of things that we just can't talk about publicly. And, you know, I'm just really uh, positive that some good things are going to happen here in uh, Mattoon and Charleston within the coming months and the coming year. And uh, I'm honored to serve as mayor of, the Matt, of Mattoon. Never thought I would, uh, but as Brandon said, sometimes you're put in a position where things just happen. But I'm delighted that it happened. Very good, thank you very much. And Brandon? Yeah, um, you know, we've all mentioned all the good things that are, that are going on and uh, it is such a true honor to be able to sit here and serve. And, you know, a lot of stuff gets, uh, gets put to the wayside sometimes because, like I said, we focus so much on the wrong things. We focus on the 10% of bad that's happening instead of the 90% of good. And I just want to continue that focus. Anybody that's heard me talk since I've taken over as mayor is I just want to beat positivity into everyone's head uh, because that's where we're going to grow. And, you know, I, I know uh, uh, he's watching this, but uh, Dr. Glassman, he is, when we say, you know, things happen for a reason and people come in the right place at the right time, we have the right person at EIU to help turn this, uh, this place around, to get us back to, a, you know, better than we ever were. The state's going to come around, um, and when all that happens, we are sitting here doing everything we can to make sure that the two communities um, are ready for that. So I, I, in my mind, I just say let's get ready for a, a boom. The ship doesn't turn around like that, but once it gains momentum and starts, it starts to turn. So, Well done, gentlemen. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure to have all four of you in studio with us this evening. I've learned a lot. Hopefully our viewers have learned a lot as well. Brandon Combs, Scott Smith from Charleston, Kyle Gill, Tim Gover from Mattoon. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you Ramin. And thank you to all of you this evening for joining us for this edition of City Spotlight. We hope you learned a lot and uh, have a pleasant evening. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.